Hello, TKU online faculty. Frank Marco coming at you uh, live from my office here in South Lake, Texas. And New Year's greetings to all of you. I hope and pray that everybody's having a great beginning of their year and are ready to engage uh, all of your life, your ministries, uh, your families, and of course your students here at TKU. And I just wanted to send a brief video. Uh, I think it's going to be brief. We'll see how, how brief it is. Uh, but just to go over some, uh, some things that I think are important for all of our faculty to be aware of and to be engaged in as we think about serving our students this semester. Um, so as you know, uh, you know, my motto here as the Dean of Distance Education is let's remove the distance in distance education. And it's important for us as faculty to always be thinking about how we're connecting with our students, not just delivering information to them, delivering content to them, but making them feel like we know who they are, that they're important to us, and that we are going out of our way to communicate and connect with them uh, using you know, electronic, uh, digitally mediated means. So when the students are in our class, it's a lot easier, right? We see them face to face and we can look at them and get to know them uh, real easily because they come in once or twice a week for eight weeks or a semester. And so we don't have to work as hard to connect with them because that human connection is just sort of built into our social interaction. But unfortunately, when we teach distance education courses, we have to work a bit harder in order to make that sense of connection. And it's never gonna be the same as a classroom. I'm not saying that we can duplicate that. Um, but as the faculty, it's still important for us to do all we can to engage our students. And so, excuse me, so I just wanna give you a couple of uh, thoughts here and ideas and ways that you can better engage your students. Uh, the first of those is creating videos. Now, this video here, I'm simply doing this with my phone. And if you have a modern smartphone, you can create videos about this same quality using the means that you have here. I don't have any fancy lighting. I'm just sitting here in my office. I just make sure it looks reasonably good and I've framed it out a little bit here. Um, but there's no special effects. There's really nothing fancy about creating videos today. So each of you have the means and the technology to create quality videos probably sitting right there on your desktop. You may even be watching this on your smartphone, and if so, that means you have the means and the technology to create adequate videos for your class. Now, can you do all the fancy cuts and all that kind of stuff and lower thirds? Maybe not right on your smartphone. You might have to invest in, a, in another piece of software to do that. But if you don't wanna go there, Start with your phone and start with the videos that you can create simply uh, in your telephone or your smartphone. I don't even know why they call them phones anymore. They really should just call them pocket computers and get it over with because that's really what they're. All right, I digress. So uh, please, please, if you don't already have video content of you in your course, uh, begin to develop that this semester for us. And you might say, well, I've got videos of really smart people that know a lot more than me. Well, that's great. Um, however, you're teaching the course. And again, our goal is to remove the distance. So it's great that they're seeing these experts and I encourage you to use that kind of stuff. But at minimum, you should be creating a weekly introduction video where they can see you and hear from you and hear your heart and passion and maybe even giving them some instructions about the assignment for the week or encouragement for the week or whatever it is that you have to say. And it doesn't have to be long. It can be, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes. Uh, if you want to do teaching videos, absolutely. I think that is excellent as well. You can go on for longer, maybe not too long. You know, they say the, uh, you know, the, the, the attention span of the kids these days is getting shorter and shorter. Now, you know, I don't think you have to keep them like two minutes. I, it's, this isn't YouTube, right? This is still higher education. But maybe 15, 20 minutes I think is good. If you need to go longer than that, maybe put two of them together. You don't want a, a, an hour thing, you know, it's just, it's just a bit much. And so, and again, these are videos that you create for your class, not simply something that maybe is from a, a lecture series you did at your church or something like that. Again, those are cool, but you're not looking your students in the eye and saying, 
Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your instructor here for the class. I'm here for you for the next seven weeks. I want to interact with you, right? They see you and they hear good content, but it's not that connective sort of relational uh, way to use the media that, that I'm looking for here from our professors to make a connection. So use the resources and the content you have, but I want you to develop original content for your students in our courses where they can see you and they can hear you and they can get to know your passion for them and your concern for them as students, okay? So enough said about that. If you have any questions about developing them or posting them or hosting them or how do I get into my, how do I get them into my classes? It's great, it's on my phone. How do I get into my class? Contact your good friend, Josh Rankin here at the King's University. He will help you, he will resource you, he will hold your hand and he'll help you to get those videos into your courses so they look amazing. And believe me, your students are gonna love them. We always get positive feedback on the course evaluations from the faculty members who take the time to create original content for their students, okay? That's it. Now, what's another way we can connect with our students? Well, the venerable discussion board, right? We all know it, we all love it. Maybe we have a love-hate relationship with it. It's because it's always there, there's always something to do. But the discussion is the one of the ways that we stay connected with our students on a regular basis in our distance education courses. Now, it's great that some of you are posting good questions uh, and some of you do a great job. You're very conscientious and you follow up and you respond quickly to your students' posts and comments and you interact. And I, I appreciate all of you that are working really hard. Uh, some of you don't work as hard on this. I'm gonna be quite honest. And I need you all to sort of step that up. Uh, you can't ignore your students in the discussion board. Uh, some of the responses we hear in the evaluations is, it was a great course, but I really wish the professor was more involved in the discussion. Me too. And again, as the dean, one of our expectations, one of my expectations I have of all the faculty is that they're fully engaged in the discussion board. Now, does that mean you have to be in there 24 hours a day, seven days a week? No. But you should be in there three, I would say three to four times a week. You're going to post the post on Monday. Tuesday, you might have a couple early birds. Wednesday, a couple more early birds. But really, most of us have like a Wednesday, you know, post your initial post by Wednesday. So really, you should be spending the most of your bulk of your time in the discussion on Thursday and Friday and maybe even Saturday. Okay, so that's when your students are going to start to post. So if you have a Wednesday deadline, then that's when you can expect them to begin to interact and you need to go in and respond to them. So there's a rule of thumb. Every student should hear from their professor uh, substantively at least once a week. All right. Now, if you have 30 students in your class, I understand that's a lot. So you can use the other rule of thumb, which is if your class is really large, um, you can res they should hear from you substantively at least every other week. All right, so if it's like 12 to 15-ish, you know, they should hear from you. If it's 25 to 30-ish, all right, I, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of grace there. You don't have to, you know, because that'll take a lot of time, right? I understand that. You're only getting paid so much for this class. So, but do your best to substantively interact with all of your students on a regular basis because I'd really like to see that part of our uh, evaluation go up. Um, you know, some of the things we can't control, whether a student likes a textbook or not, right? You know, so we like it, we feel it's good. They might not like it, but some of the things we can control in our course, and one of them is our participation in the discussion. Okay, so if you're teaching for TKU this semester, our expectation and my expectation is that you're actively engaged in the discussion from the beginning of the class to the very end of the class. All right, not said about that. Now, let me mention another way that I feel is a really strong way to connect with our students online, and I've been using this more now, is using the Collaborate tool. Collaborate is a platform similar to Zoom, GoToMeeting, you might be familiar with that from other contexts, but you can set up a meeting and you can host a meeting and you can lead the meeting uh, a lot in real time. Students love this, I love this too. I think it's really good for uh, at the beginning of the class to get to know students and to explain the class to them. For projects, right, if you have them doing a project, and a lot of times in a class at the end of the semester or midterm, whenever they're done with a the project, they will present it to the class. Using, Zoom, using Collaborate, 
for project presentations is, is really good. And you get to hear from students and you hear them kind of going and doing their thing. And you, as a faculty, it's very satisfying to think, man, these guys are getting it. This is really good. So you can also use it just for teaching. Hey, I've got a topic here. This is a little tricky. I don't have any video on it. And I just want to get in there and I want to speak my heart about this or give my insight on this. Collaborate is a great tool for doing this. So I strongly encourage you, uh, if you haven't used Collaborate, to begin using Collaborate. And if you do Collaborate, guess what? You don't have to have a discussion that week. For all the students that show up and participate in the Collaborate session, you know, you've already had your substantive, uh, what's called contact hours with those students. So you don't, you know, it's just one less thing you have to do if you show up for the Collaborate. And you might be saying, well, what if they can't all participate? What if some of my students say they can't be there? It's fine, there's a record button on Collaborate, you record it, and then the next day you go in there and you link it, and you come up with a discussion prompt and said, if you couldn't watch, if you couldn't be there, watch this video, or watch the video of the discussion, and then respond, give me a summary or your own thoughts or whatever it is. So you can have them do a kind of after the fact sort of thing. And then you can go in there and follow up with those folks. All right, so use uh, Collaborate as well. And then the last thing I wanna say is the announcement board. Uh, you should be making a, an announcement at the beginning of the week, and you should be making an announcement at the end of the week. The beginning of the week is, hey, everybody, how's it going? Looking forward to this week. Here's what we're talking about. Um, at the end of the week is, hey, everybody, great week. I really enjoyed this. Let me kind of give some parting thoughts and summary. Uh, sometimes I'll even do middle of the week announcements as well. And this is oftentimes kind of like a bonus thing. Like maybe I read an article or a website or some idea or some event came out. And I just want to, you know, bring that to everybody's attention and say, hey, here's a great site for you. Here's a great article or consider how this event impacts what we're talking about this week. So use that announcement feature regularly to open, close, and maybe even in the middle there, connect with your students. And this will help you reduce the distance. So hopefully you're getting a you're getting the picture here that all these things here that I'm encouraging you to do, the video, the discussions, the live web sessions, and the announcements are all ways to connect with your students relationally. Now there's some information in there as well, uh, but they also do a great job of helping you to connect the distance. So when that student is done with that class, they say, you know what? I heard a lot from that student, from that faculty member. He gave me, he or she gave me announcements every week. He was involved, he or she was involved in the discussion and they did videos for me. And uh, we even did a live web session or two, right? That's a lot of connection with the faculty member. Now, I understand this all takes time and I really appreciate and understand that we're all busy people. Uh, but I just also just want to let you know, we expect our faculty to be connecting with their students in a, in a very ongoing and a substantive manner. So some of you are doing this, and I know I'm preaching the choir, and so I don't want you to feel bad like I'm not, you're not doing enough. If you're doing these things, great. I applaud you. You know, keep it up. But if you're not doing these things, I want to encourage you to begin doing these things. I, our goal here, again, is to improve the quality of our distance education program. And we can only do that as our faculty member are conscientious and concerned and aware of ways that they can connect with their students. All right. So I'm going to conclude with that. If you have any questions or comments, please do not hesitate to call me, uh, email me. If you want to get on my case, you say, hey, Frank, this is too much work for me. I understand that too. So let's let's have a dialogue here. I know this is kind of one way now, um, but I want to hear from you if you have any questions or concerns or comments about anything that we're asking you to do here at TKU. So again, let me express my sincere appreciation for the work you do, for the expertise that you bring, for the commitment that you have to serving our students. They all appreciate it. And, and you need to know that the, the distance ed program here at TK is a substantial part of what we do as a university. Pastor Jack founded this university over 20 years ago for men and women preparing for kingdom ministry. And this has become an important part of that initial vision and ongoing vision of the current uh, administration and vision of the university. So you are an important part of what we are about here at TKU. And, and, and I know I speak for everybody here that we appreciate the work you do. I'm proud of all my faculty. I, I boast on you guys all the time. And I just want to continue to encourage you to do the best job you can to serve our students this semester. So God bless you. Uh, look forward to working with all of you and interacting with you this semester.